My name is Greg Nilgis. Today's 26 April 2024. This video is in support of Sonora Desert Institute's FTH-202 Revolvers Module 1 assignment. And uh, I have used no external re references for this. This is just knowledge I've acquired uh, over the years. Uh, I use the word knowledge lightly. Uh, no live ammunition in the workspace. I've, for expedience, I've safed these uh, previously, all these firearms, but we will go through the motions to show the best I can with the camera that these firearms are safe. And you probably won't be able to see the nipples very well, but there are no primers on there. So one of the first, uh, we're gonna talk about deficiencies and advancements real quick. Uh, we only have four minutes to cover this, so I'm gonna try to move quickly and, and I'll stutter and stammer as little as possible. Uh, one of the primary advancements or deficiencies was uh, the cartridge and primer system. Uh, for these black powder gun, this is a black powder reproduction, it, you, the cylinder had to be removed. And to do that, you had to remove this wedge for time. We're not gonna do that. Pull the barrel off, pull the cylinder off the arbor, load uh, the uh, individual chambers uh, with uh, your, your load, and then put it all back together. And then you can put the primers on the nipples and you're in the fight. Right, um, quite slow and cumbersome, uh, but it still was an improvement. The the primer nipple system was an improvement over previous flintlock designs of uh, handguns. So we go to that to something more modern, and uh, we'll go to the extreme of maybe this Ruger uh, Blackhawk, where now you have self-contained cartridges that has a primer built in at the time, not for this design, but at the time the first uh, self-contained cartridges were rim fired but the cartridge is already loaded up. You can just open your loading gate and load them up as you would. As a matter of fact, it's probably better demonstrated with this, this conversion cart, uh, Cimarron reproduction uh, with the conversion done on it that it would accept that. Originally, this would have been a nipple design as well, uh, but the design is in it had been converted to accept self-contained cartridges. Load it that way, much faster than this system. Um, and, but to uh, take it apart, um, you still had to remove the barrel to take the cylinder out for cleaning or whatever. You had to remove the barrel. Again, remove the wedge, remove the barrel, pull the cylinder off the arbor. Uh, and then you go to a more advanced design with this Ruger, and you just open the loading gate on it, and you push a little pin here, pull this, or push a little button here, pull this pin out, and the cylinder comes out. You can clean it, inspect it, whatever the case may be. Much faster, uh, big improvement. Uh, however, one of the biggest improvements, and it's not just for revolvers, it's for all handguns, frankly, and to include rifles uh, in modern designs, is metallurgy. Uh, we'll talk about this. These are both 44 caliber firearms, 44 uh, caliber black powder, 44 magnum um, uh, smokeless powder. And uh, this gun here is, is quite the handful. Uh, frankly, it's over four and a half pounds. So it's not, not light. Now, this 44 Magnum isn't light either, but it's just a hair over three pounds. And it should go without saying, the 44 Magnum uh, would put that 44 black powder uh, cartridge to, to shame in the power department. Now, the 44 caliber black powder was a, was a formidable um, ballistic uh, platform, but this 44 Magnum uh, is much more uh, powerful. And that's because of the metallurgy. If you had tried to fire through this this firearm or a firearm of the period, uh, a smokeless powder cartridge, uh, it may very well have not held together. Um, so the last thing we'll talk about is modern designs and what may a gunsmith be up against as far as deficiencies or how you may improve it. Some people may not like the sighting systems on some of these black or some of these revolvers. Um, they're you know basic blade and, and notch type of a sight. Some of them are adjustable, some of them are not. Um, as opposed to more modern sighting systems such as a red dot or a scope. Now personally on firearms that we're displaying here, I wouldn't want to put a red dot or a scope on them. That's my personal preference. I like the historical significance of them, but some people may want that. So as a gunsmith, you may find yourself where somebody's requested to to mount such a device to the revolver in question. Uh, and particularly when it comes to the red dot, before you get to that, if it, granted, if it doesn't have a Picatinny rail on it or a 1913 rail, you may have to consider milling the frame 
Um, and before you do that, you need to evaluate whether the frame is strong enough to do that. So that's, uh, that's one, one thing that uh, modern firearms you may find yourself up against as a gunsmith. And that's all I've got for module one. We'll see you next week for module two.